What is going on everyone? So welcome to my film reveal video. This is where I'm gonna take a look at my film for the very first time. This was for my Death Valley trip from January of 2022. And uh, just as usual, I have not looked at the film before. We're gonna look at it for the first time. It's in no particular order. And the film is in protective sleeves so I can handle it safely with my hands. Um, I have 32 sheets of Provia 100F and I have four sheets of Kodak Portra 160. So let's get right to it. All right, so this is the first scene that I photographed on the trip and um, it's okay. Um, I have two variations of this one. What I really liked about this scene was the diagonal emphasis. And I was trying to shoot a photo at that moment when the sun was just partially obscured by the horizon. So you have um, some of the, the blue tones from the sky from off to the east, and then the warm tones uh, from the sun as it's setting. And it's okay, it's a little harsher light than I'd like. Um, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be the one that has the stronger light. I know there's one that has a little bit less light as well. It's okay, I'll have to scan it to get a feel for it. I'll say I'm not in love with it, though I do like the diagonal emphasis. Um, and I can tell you by looking at this that it is very sharp. Oh yeah. See the individual grains of sand. It actually falls off a little bit on the left side. Which I'm a little surprised by. Though I think most of that is more so that this is getting closer um, to the camera. So it's not so much, it's more of a proximity to the lens. Um, it's okay, we'll, we'll see. Let me get a box here to put the empty sheets in, or the sheets we looked at in. Uh, okay, so this is the version taken when the sun was stronger. So I probably should have waited, and you'll see what a difference it makes for just a very, um, about a minute's time, maybe less than a minute. So here's when the sun was a little bit stronger, and then here is when the sun was weaker. So I like this one better because you have a better balance of the tones. Um, but you'll see how with this one, it's a lot more contrasty. So I got a little, a little trigger happy and shot it a little sooner than I should have. Um, so the two, I like the one when the sun is a little bit less powerful, but I'm not gonna say it's necessarily a crazy good photo or anything. So this is that same sort of moment. It's when the sun is just partially obscured by the mountains on the horizon. And I did like this little creek of dried mud. And this is also a scene where I photographed it at this point. And I think my next photo of this will be when it's, the light is just a little bit, like I'm a little late on the capture of it. And then the light starts getting really flat. So at this point, the light has dimension. But then once the sun sets, the light goes really, really flat. And then a little later on, you get the blue hour light, which I think I exposed as well. Um, I'll say I don't hate this. Um, I did like some of these lines I was working with there. I'd be curious to see how this one looks compared to uh, the other variations of this one. And so let's compare that to... All right, so this is... Uh, it's right this way. So now this is interesting because at first the light looks very flat. And especially when we compare it to this one, which looks very dynamic at first. I'd like that. At first, this one was a little bit of a disappointment. But the more I look at it, the more I like how it draws attention to the darker areas. And it softens the contrast. I'm really curious how this is gonna look when it's scanned. Um, I really like the fractal look of the mud here. And it was a little bit different from the mud I've seen in the past. Now, I believe they had a cold snap in Death Valley. 
And the way that these cracks are in the mud, it almost makes me wonder if it got cold enough for things to freeze up a little bit, because there's a really different sort of mud. It could have also just been the materials uh, contained within that mud, which is probably more likely case. I will say I kind of dig this one, because it is such a harsh subject that when it's presented this way, it softens it. Now also, as I remember, when I was shooting this, it was very windy. And I might be seeing a little bit of that. My first instinct is it's not quite as sharp as I'd expect. I do wonder if there is a little bit of wind motion on it. Um, so that's when I'll have to scan to see. But I feel like it should be a little sharper. But I like that light better. So this is one of those scenes where I was excited to find it. This is that same area. And here we had this very light colored um, sort of clay type. Um, it's, it was a very thin layer of mud that was spread over an area of existing mud. And then you end up with these really fine cracks. And I love this transition these cracks back here that are more formed in the typical polygons that you see, but then it goes into this area where the cracks are just kind of forming in this really pristine area. I'm really digging this one. This one's very sharp. It's very sharp. Um, and I exposed a couple sheets on this one because uh, one of them took into consideration the bellows compensation, one of them didn't. And if this is all I have, that's fine. I might have a brighter one, I might have a darker one, but this one's okay. But I do love this, this transition from there to there. And it reminded me of some sort of like giant creature breaking out of an egg down here. Um, that's a very cool subject. I will say I quite like this one. Um, so I'll have another one of that one, which I can come back to in a little bit. This is more of a blue hour version of that first scene. Not first scene, but that scene that looks like this. And you can see the light is getting a little bit cooler. And you still have some light hitting in there. Um, let's see what we do for sharpness. This one I feel is better than the other ones. Yeah, this one's actually quite sharp. So my best guess is that those first two ones were affected by wind, but this one is not. So I was using an umbrella to try and shield the camera from the wind, but I believe the wind settled down after sunset which is perhaps when the best light was anyways. So, pretty excited about that. All right. This is an interesting one. Uh, because with this scene, there's a sand that's sweeping down over these very interesting weathered mud tiles. And there's a little bit of a slope here. So that last little bit of light, the dunes fell out of the light. I really like the dimensionality of this area in here. I do wish there's more light here, though I do, I, I do know that I have another one with more of that. Um, if I had just a little more light kissing off these dunes here, I think it would be what I would need. It was very calm when I shot this, and it is very sharp. And my exposure is spot on. So my technique for timing these very difficult photos is to meter off a gray card that's on the ground. And then I use a three-stop neutral density filter to lengthen the exposure times. 
because otherwise I start hitting these weird fractions of a second that's really hard to work with when um, the shutter speeds on the lens are only in full stop increments. So I like some of what's going on here. I like the color. I think I'm good at the composition, but I want to see light on those. And this is just after that. So we'll see if I have any other better variations of that. So this is a little bit more toward the blue hour. Now there is a time when you naturally get a magenta sort of light. And at first I thought it was just the film doing weird film things. Um, but if you actually look toward uh, the sky after the sun sets below the mountains, it does go a little bit magenta. I don't know if it's dust in the air, like the desert dust in the air that does that. Um, I would want, if this is the best I have of the scene, I would definitely want to reduce the magenta. I feel like I have enough information to work with. And it is very sharp. Um, though I do believe I have other variations of this scene as well. Because if you wait until after that magenta range of light, then things seem to go a little bit cooler again. So, but I do like how the sand texture does play into this. And what I saw when I was composing this is these lines going this way, and then this kind of going this way along with some lines in here. Um, so I think there's potential with this. Though I'm curious about, there are other two versions I have of this. Because I really like that texture. All right, so the light's a little harsher than I'd like on this one. Uh, we definitely have a little bit of cyan cast that Provia does. And this is the last little bit that I had light hitting these areas, but the light was still pretty harsh. And so if I go back a few, nope, I went too far. That one. This one. So you see how on this one here, I like this light better, but this is a little featureless. On this one, I like this, but not this. I guess technically I could kind of use this one, this one, and scan that and put that there, but I'm not sure if I'm that interested in doing that. But I do like how on this one, the light fades. On this one, it's a little too much. But if I did have this plus that over there, I would have the best of both worlds. And I don't typically like to do that, but it would be a fun little experiment to see how it looks. Now on this one, uh, I forgot I shot this one. This is a harsh light version. And I was, this is an experiment. I was curious to see how Provia would handle this harsh light. Because I don't typically shoot in this sort of light. Um, I think I was blocking, I think my lens hood was blocking that. I didn't check carefully enough. Um, but it does confirm that I avoid this sort of light usually for a reason. Because it is a little, little too much, a little too harsh. Um, but certainly, certainly good to confirm my thoughts on that. So this is the same location that I shot the photo that had the cracks up top that kind of you know, worked its way down. Uh, this is not far from there. And on this one, by the way, you might hear my cat whining at the door right now. He thinks it's time to feed him. Uh, but I shot this on one of the mornings and I really liked how there was a layer of mud down below that had mud cracks. And then a new thin layer of mud was washed over it which has its own cracks. So as this layer of mud kind of curls up, it reveals the mud underneath it. So it reminded me of the whole like Superman kind of thing, you know? Um, but there are some very interesting textures in here. And you have these little cracks down in here. Um, and I was trying to find a way of organizing the chaos centered around, or centered around this area here, which I think works pretty well. And it does appear to be very sharp. So 
So that's pretty cool. So that'll be a fun one to, to scan and see how it looks. But I love this, um, the look of the old mud kind of curling up and getting blown away. So that's kind of neat. All right, next up. So this is the scene that I already showed you, uh, but the difference is that this one has had the um, bellows overextension factor applied into it. So if you shoot a photo on a large format camera and you want to focus really close to something, you can just keep extending those bellows and your lens will keep close, uh, focusing closer and closer. But when you do that, you lose light. And Usually if you're shooting something really small, you really have to correct for it. I mean, if you shoot something life size, it might be a you know couple stops of compensation you have to add. Um, but in this case, it was a little bit of a larger scene. So first I shot it um, right here. And then afterwards I realized maybe I should add some compensation to it. So I exposed a second sheet of film, which is this one with the compensation applied. Though you'll also notice that the light is a little bit different. This is a little bit more um, earth toned. This is a little bit more blue. So as uh, the light, as the sun was coming up from behind the mountains and the light was changing as the sunrise was progressing, the color of the light changed a little bit. So I do know that this one was taken second, this one was taken first. This one would be just fine if this is all I had. Then who knows, maybe this one will scan better. Uh, but this one, the exposure is a bit closer because it really was more of a uh, white sort of uh, cracked mud that was there. Um, so I think maybe this one, but reduce the blue cast a little bit. Um, I think we'll do about everything I really need to do on that one. Uh, but when I set the composition for this, I like the uniformity of the top area. And we have some of those polygons you really think of when it comes to the cracked mud. But then I like the progression with these down here. I want to make sure that I had, you know, some of the cracks extending all the way to the bottom here. Uh, the reason for that is just to build a little bit of tension in it. So, and also the diagonal emphasis there. So I found an area that allowed me to frame that. And this is where the artist view catcher I have, uh, which is this little plastic frame that you can kind of open up the aspect ratio, you hold it up and look through it allows you to get a feeling for if a composition is going to work before you get the camera set up. So, it'll be interesting to scan two of these, but I think between the two of them, I'll have something that's decent. And here's another scene I photographed in that same area. Um, so this is during the time of day when the light goes a little bit more magenta. So you'll have it where you have, you know, the direct sunlight hitting the landscape as the sun is still up. And as soon as the sun drops behind the mountains, things go really flat and bland. Then they go towards the magenta time, and then it goes towards blue light a little bit after that. And let's see here. So this is when the light starts going a little bit more blue. Um, this certainly does better um, than the magenta time. This is about a if I remember right, this is a 50 second long exposure. So this is a bit of a longer exposure. And it does appear to be very, very sharp. Um, and I'll probably need to remove a little bit of the blue cast, um, but we'll see. I don't think it's as compelling as some of the other mud cracked photos, but it's interesting in that it showcases this very unusual way that this mud cracked with this fractal look to it. And that set up against the more um, weathered mud tiles there. So it's interesting. I'll have to scan it, see how it looks. This is in one of the canyons. And what's interesting is that um, the way that this looks, so Provia captured, it captured the tones pretty well. You notice that nothing is too dark in the shadows, nothing is too bright, so my exposure is good. 
It's a little bit muddy overall, but I think in some cases that's just because of the way that Provia is. Provia has a little bit of a cyan cast to it, which I think um, reduces the natural warmth that was in the foreground because it was a yellowy kind of, it was mostly a yellow, yellowish light hitting these. So really warm tone because the sun was hitting off some of this stuff that was in full sunlight off to the left. What I liked about the scene was the progression of these rocks as they worked their way back in there. I like this, a little bit of light hitting that. Um, in terms of sharpness, it's quite good. Now these things are tricky to shoot because I have a very limited depth of field. And so I did use a little bit of front tilt. So the plane of focus hits all that sort of stuff and it looks like it hit all the most important stuff. So this is one where I'll need to scan it. I'll need to warm it up a little bit to make up for what the film did. Uh, but we'll see how it looks. It's a bit like looking at a raw file of a digital image. Um, but Provia certainly gave me all the info I needed from that one. Now this is a photo here that I wasn't really expecting a lot from and I don't think I really have a lot going on here. Um, but I was curious how Provia would handle this light because you had this intense glow down here which was greatly minimized by the Provia. Um, so you can see a little bit of the natural cyan cast that Provia has here. Uh, to my eye this whole thing was very yellow. Um, but I have all the information I need. I don't necessarily think it's a compelling composition. I like some of the lines here. I like some of this stuff here. This is a little bit blank for me. Um, I found the composition further back where I had this rock was kind of moved down here and it balanced a little bit better in there, but then I had a little bit too much of this. Um, so this will be a fun one to scan in and just see how it does. Um, but I don't think it's really gonna be anything I use for anything. Um, but it was also pretty nice just to see how Provia handled that scene. Hmm. I'm not sure what to think about this one. Um, exposure is tricky here. I had some very naturally bright areas here. I had some dark areas here. Provia got both of them. This kind of becomes quite muddy. Um, the eye is gonna go towards bright areas. So I do have, like that this is here. And I do like how there is a bit of warmth hitting here. I'm not super blown away by it. I thought this would look cooler, but this might be the sort of image where I need to scan it and see if I can warm it up a little bit and tweak the curves to get it to look a little bit more like it actually did in person. On the positive note, I do have sufficient detail in the highlights and the shadows. So I might be able to make it into what I need it to be. Um, it's sharp. Now I took two photos of this scene. One focus back here, one focus in here, in case I want to do a focus stack. There's this really interesting green rock right here. And it blends in a bit right now. Though I think perhaps if I tweak the curves to make it look a little bit more like it did to my eye, uh, perhaps I can differentiate a little bit. Because this is more of a greenish color, and this was really more of an orange color. So I think if I warm it up, it's gonna differentiate the tones a little bit more. It's a bit muddy looking as it is now, but that's the way Provia is. So we'll see on that. Another variation of that same scene. I don't know why I shot two of this. Um, but that's what it is. And this is gonna be the, the focus for the foreground. So on this one, this area here is in focus. This area here is actually still pretty decent. So 
So we'll see between the two of them. Not sure what to think of that one though. It was a really unusual canyon. Another one. Now, hold on. Okay, so this is the for, this is the focus to the front one. Yeah, so this is the one that's focused to the front. I guess I had two variations of the back of the one focused to the back. So this is focused back here. This one's focused here, and then if all works out, I can put them together. But it just may not be that compelling of a scene. The very surreal canyon, though. We'll see how it scans. All right. And on the way out of that canyon was this scene with this boulder, which I liked how it was trapped in here and just levitating there. And this one over here, which is working its way down. Um, and there's some lines in the background there. And this is one I'll need to scan because Provia did rob it of some of its natural warmth. Um, but you can see there are some natural cool tones here and warm tones here. So I think I got something to work with here. It is very sharp. So I used a little bit of swing which is where you take the front standard, you move it just a little bit, just to try to get both that and that in focus because they're kind of working its way back. Uh, so it's a little further away than that. I think there might be some potential here. It's one I'll definitely need to scan and play with a little bit. Um, but the exposure is good. Composition works pretty well. Um, so we'll see. Some really crazy stuff in that canyon. So this is a close-up of that one rock, that greenish rock that was just kind of hanging there in the corner, kind of at the entrance of that saw canyon. And this is interesting because we have this green tone here set against this warm tone here. Now this whole thing went a little bit cyan. Um, and when I correct that, this is gonna stand out even more. And it should separate the tonality between sort of the cool tones here and the warm tones there. I like this little area right here. For me, this makes the image because it makes it this, this rock is just kind of casually leaning here and I like the way that this little tunnel right there. So you have these two pathways. And on this one, I was as far back as I could be. Uh, I was basically up against one of these walls with my 240 millimeter lens. I wish I had a little bit more space at the top and bottom when I was shooting it, but when I look at this now, I think I'm okay. I think I have a good amount there. I think I have a good amount there. There's this massive boulder that was right up here, which I think I might just be seeing a tiny bit of there, which would have been rather, um, distracting to have in there. So I was able to kind of not have that in there, but I think I like this one. And it is very sharp. Depth of feel, I probably won't be able to get the background. Yeah, I can't get the background, but that's okay. I got all the important stuff. Um, and it's a very interesting scene. It was just, really unusual shapes and colors and textures. So I think this one, if I warm it up, if I play with the curves a little bit, I think I'll have what I need. Um, but it was a very unusual scene. And I, I, I made sure that the exposure up here, it was bright, but I want to make sure I didn't lose anything down here. So I think I did okay on the exposure. It looked like a very ghostly sort of feature. That'll be an interesting one to scan. This, I knew this was gonna be a uh, blank exposure. What happened here is I somehow double loaded uh, film into a holder. I already had a sheet of film that was in there and I put another one in, so that's what that one is. 
this is one I was pretty excited to see. So I found this, so this is a desert holly bush that is obviously dead. And it was in an area where the wind is quite strong at times. And it um, blew this coarse sand over it. And it's mostly hollow in the middle. And I really liked all these twigs coming out with this void in the middle. Uh, I feel like I could lose a little more of the top. I feel like I can crop in a little more of the top if need be. Um, but not by much. Um, but I really like this. Um, I shot, I think, three sheets of film on this. Depth of field is going to be tricky. I think I should have some of the most important stuff sharp. Yeah, that's quite good. Depth of field is a challenge, but I have enough. So these areas here I have in focus. Uh, some of the, the pebbles and coarse sand in the background, I don't have tack sharp, but it's no big deal. But I like that. And I'll have three different variations of this as the light was changing. So this one, I have some warm light. So the sun is coming up kind of towards the left over here, and it's shooting a little light in there. And this is before sunrise, so before the sun was actually up, but just the glow in the sky. I do like that, though. We'll see. Okay, so here's another variation of that scene. So you can see the light here is a bit more cyan. Um, this is a thing where I'll have to scan them and see. I mean, off, just off the top of my head, I like this light better. Um, just because it has a bit more dimension to it. But in reality, a slight tweak of the curve, they'll look about the same. So far, I like that one better. And then this one, maybe a little bit more, a little bit later on. So of all of them, you can have to scan them, but I like that. It's a very interesting subject. I quite like how that turned out. Very cool. Subject, light, composition. Three important things. This is the final scene I photographed. I exposed two sheets of this. Um, one as it got a little bit closer to direct sunlight creeping into the frame. And then one that was a bit earlier. So I'm guessing this is the one I shot maybe when it was a little bit earlier. Because it's a bit bluer. I liked the line here, here here, here, here. So there's so much going on there in terms of all these natural lines. Um, I'll need to warm this up a little bit because it's a bit on the cold side. Uh, it is very sharp. My exposure is very good. Um, is the next one the same one? No, next one's a different one. But I'll have another variation of this one. Uh, here it is. We'll see how it compares. So I'm guessing that this is the first one I shot, and then this is the second one that I shot. And I'll need to pull out a little bit more of these tones, because to my eye, this was warmer. Um, I think there's something here, though, because there's some interesting lines. So I think there is there's something there. It's always fun to find a way of organizing the chaos of nature. Not bad though, not bad. All right, next up. This is interesting. So this is the, f eh, not the final scene, but the l next to the final scene I photographed. And this was taken during a little bit of the magenta hour. Um, but with this, I, I liked all these lines here. 
So it seemed a bit more chaotic than you'd find in one of these areas. Um, and I really like the low angle light. If this is the best I have, I'd probably reduce the magenta and see about um, going a little bit more on the cool side because the light's good, the subject's good. Um, and it's got some interesting dimension to it. So I do quite like that. Because with photography, it's all about light, subject, and composition. And so my approach is to find the cool subject, get that composition, and then wait for the good light. And on a day like this, when it was a cloudy day, or a cloudless day in the desert, you know you're gonna have that glow after sunset and that glow before sunrise. Um, so I was able to make use of that. I'll have, I'll have more variations of that. And then this one. So this is the final variation of that scene with the mud cracks in the sand. I will say I like this one best. I will need to tone down the magenta. Um, so if I can tone down the magenta, get it to be more of a, like a, a little bit more of a bluish. I think I can make this work very nicely. I love the flowing lines here and how this flows into the composition. It's a bit tricky trying to figure out how to compose this one. Um, I really loved the transition between the mud tiles and the sand here. The different textures, the different shapes. Um, I think I got something to work with on this one. It is so sharp, and it's such a beautiful subject. I really like the way that turned out. I'm going to need to scan this and see if I can reduce the magenta cast in a way that looks very natural. But I really like that. It's such a dimensional light. Um, that was probably about a 50 second long exposure. Now we're back to this area of mud again. This might be my blue hour photo of this. Because uh, if I go back to the previous one, man, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, I'm not sure which one will look better when I scan it. The light's a bit more dimensional on this one. This might be the final exposure. Um, but this has everything I really need. So this is where it's a little tough to tell um, with Provia because I know I'm going to need to work with it a little bit to get it more like how it looked in person. I, think I might need to cool it down a little bit. Between this one and the other one, I'll, I'll have something I can do with it. But it's a beautiful scene. And I found that scene my first day there. I'm glad I went back for it. <laughs> this is that transitional light I was photographing this scene with. And I think it's a little much, honestly. This sort of light works better on sand dunes. But I think on this highly textured subject, I think it's more about the blue hour light or magenta hour light. Um, I'll have to scan it, but I don't think this is the best light for this scene. And the reason why is on here, it, the light areas, the yellow areas, those are what attract detail. And you lose all these patterns. It really is just more about these edges that catch the light. Whereas on this one, if you imagine this one just being a little bit brighter and with less magenta, um, the emphasis is on these natural patterns, which is really what I was looking at to begin with. So, so it's good to shoot a lot of photos. Color neg time. Um, this is that scene with the canyon, which is not going to be all that amazing. Um, but this will be interesting to see how the color handles it. This is 
Kodak Portra 160. And the rock leaning up against the uh, edge of the canyon. Again, it'll be an interesting one to scan so I can learn the film. And who knows, maybe this one will do a lot better than the Provia did. Uh, I thought I pulled this one. So I got a massive light leak here. Usually this is a result of the film holder not being um, properly put into the camera. Um, but it doesn't really matter too much on that one anyways. And then here's the scene with the slot canyon, the boulder there. So um, it was an interesting batch of images from this trip and a lot of details and close-up shots. And um, so it'll be interesting to get them scanned in, see how they look on the computer and uh, to really spend some time getting to know these images and then I can put together the videos and everything else along those lines. But I wanna thank everyone for watching. We'll see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and wanna help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com slash donate. I also have prints in my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.